Hey everyone, it's great to see you. Today we're going to be talking about boxwood bushes and I have some in my yard. I did not plant them so I'm not quite sure on which type of boxwood they are, but they're all struggling a little bit. So this boxwood has been doing great. This is the first spring that I'm seeing any trouble and you can tell that it has some yellowing of leaves here and some spots on the leaves that I'm concerned about. So I'm going to take a sample of this and send it in to our local university that will be able to test to see what it is and let me know how I can treat it. Of course, what I'm most concerned about is that it could possibly be boxwood blight, which is not something you can treat, and we would have to remove the boxwoods. I don't want it to spread though, so it's worth knowing so that I can take care of the problem now. If it's something else, then hopefully they'll be able to direct me in how I can treat that. So all I need to do for taking a sample is to cut off, uh, you know, enough of the leaves that look damaged, stick them in a Ziploc bag, and mail them away. So this will be the first sample. I'm going to two different bushes here. This will be the first sample that I'm taking. I'm just making sure I'm getting plenty here to send them. Okay, now whenever you are taking a sample here or pruning something you think could be diseased, always wipe off your pruners with an alcohol solution. I'm not actually taking a sample of this box, but I did want to show it to you. It's really in deep shade as soon as the trees leaf out. So I've been watching it thinking it's just a bad placement for a boxwood. You can tell that that side really has died off. I think a lot of that reason is because the climbing hydrangea just overtakes here. Then when I look at the rest of the bush, it's not in great shape, but I don't believe it has something different than what the other boxwoods have. So I'm confident that when I hear back from the extension about what my boxwoods have, I can treat this the same way. And quite truthfully, even if this one were perfectly fine disease wise, the shade just is not a good place for this. I'm thinking of replacing it anyway. So boxwoods are one of those plants that everybody loves and nobody really wants to give up planting and yet boxwood blight has really become a problem in many states. I believe there's about 13 states that report that it has found boxwood blight there. It is highly contagious between your boxwoods and there is nothing you can spray on your boxwood to help it recover once it has boxwood blight. So you know, consider, if you're thinking of getting a boxwood, consider some other alternatives, which I'll be talking about in the future. There are some great, cute little bushes out there, ones that you can shape that are good alternatives to boxwood. So this cute little boxwood is at the front of the house. There's a matching one on the other side of the door. And I've been watching it for at least two years now. I knew it was struggling because it's in the shade in the back. So yeah, I wasn't quite sure if that was the problem or if we had more of a problem. But now I'm seeing that we have some similar spotting on the leaves. So I'm going to take a sample of some of those where they're turning yellow and they get spots. And then I also have some cupping of the leaves sort of curling in, which from what I've read can be an insecticide, insecticide can be an insect that has um, been causing trouble. Now that would be treatable. So I'm going to take some samples of where the leaves are sort of curling in like that and where I see some of the spotting too. And we'll see if this ends up with the same diagnosis as my backyard boxwood. It's really interesting. And you know, there are a lot of universities out there that are very willing to help with these problems. So I go online, I look, I narrow it down to a couple things. And then I'm like, I really want to make sure that I'm treating this the right way then it's a perfect time to contact um, a local university that will help you out. Our university charges about $10 a sample, which is totally worth my peace of mind to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. I don't wanna just go and spray everything <laughs> for the sake of maybe I'm gonna get the right thing. I wanna, if I have to actually spray something, make sure that it's really worthwhile and I'm doing it the right way. Okay, 
that should be enough for a good sample here. And since I am right here, you can see that my European ginger seems to like this spot. It looks nice and perky, and that is just a great sign because if it wasn't getting enough moisture and didn't like this area, it would be all drooped over and dying. So I think we are doing well with that ground cover. So I am back and I have heard from our local university. They took a look at the two samples that I sent in and I have great news, I do not have boxwood blight. More than that, I don't even have a boxwood here. <laughs> this happens to be Japanese holly, a type of Japanese holly. So I was familiar with other forms it took, like our sky pencil holly we have is a type of Japanese holly. But this is also one, uh, love it. It won't get boxwood blight and it does really well, evergreen like a boxwood, but the leaves have little serrated edges on them, unlike the boxwood leaves that are completely round. I am by far not a um, bush person person so I'm learning a lot here the good news is these little areas where the leaves are damaged it's really just winter damage I can prune those out and we should be good to go with these particular bushes now the other three bushes on the property are boxwoods they don't have boxwood blight but they have something else now I am out front with this boxwood, and this boxwood does have an insect infestation, not terribly, of psyllids. So psyllids, boxwood psyllids are these little um, insects that are sucking insects. So they do go to the ends and that's, they suck the juice out of your leaves here. That's why they end up cupping on the end of the boxwood. Now you can treat this systemically. You can spray it. For the sample that I sent in, they said it didn't look like the bush had too much damage yet. Usually it runs its course and then you're all set. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this particular boxwood and see what happens before I start spraying it. You can also trim off the cupped parts too, see if you can get rid of some of the psyllids. So that's an update on my boxwoods and my not boxwoods, the Japanese holly, and how they're doing. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.